right, ready? Let's do this. All right. Quiet on set! We only do that in our lives. <laughs> Don't forget to do your warm up. Quiet on set! That means you too. <clears throat> Should be. You've been gone for half an hour. I thought they were recording this whole thing. We have been recording this whole thing. Me. Episode of the Out About Podcast. I am your host. Uh, I'm actually the, your favorite host, and I would like to thank y'all for voting me that in that competition. But you all know your favorite, your your chillest host, Mr. Chile. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? We're we're doing fine. Good. Glad to hear that. This is not live. They can't hear you. They can hear me. Well, not they can't respond. They can respond in the comments down below. Or and send us a comment on, on your favorite podcast app. They can certainly respond, and I will read all those comments and re- respond to those comments as well. Okay. Yeah. That, I will too. Just for, just for the record, just Your Honor, record. I will do that as well. <laughs> Absolutely. If you tell me how you're doing, I will respond in the appropriate manner. Yeah. Well, you have to. You have to. What else are you gonna do? Just ignore them. You put your maybe. You put your hard earned work into making sure that you put on a quality production right. and you want to see what the people have to say. I want to know what they have to say. I really do. And you know who puts on that production with us? Our producer. Our producer, Jerome Barrow. What's up, Jerome? What's up, everybody? How is it going over there? Doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. I'm not going to lie. You know what? I'm excited. We got a couple, uh, we got a couple guests in the house tonight. A couple that I've known for... A while. We'll get into that a little bit later. But first and foremost, I want to welcome everybody to the show, Mr. and Mrs. Matt and Jamie. Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? Uh, you know, they, they're just in live. They can't, oh, I know. can't respond. You know that, right? right. Okay, good. I'm asking you guys how, I, how I need everyone's you to doing. read the comments and respond to when they tell you how they're doing. Well, he will. He yeah, always he does. Will. He always she does. always does. Yep. I mean, like, you know, Matt and Jamie, they've been with us for a while. They're really good great people a lot of you've interacted with them over the years and uh most of that's positive yeah mostly positive mostly yeah. positive yeah. you know i hear good reviews yelp they have a whole category they have a on great yelp. category on yelp yes yeah, yeah. 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 it has been it, it's quite nice but first before we get to you we have to discuss how the week's gone so far as you can tell i am very uh rested and rejuvenated and i feel great and it's definitely not been busy at all vince how's it been for you you know, it's been uh, insanely busy for me. Just crazy busy. Um, nonstop getting trucks ready, getting, getting turned. You know, it's it's been that that kind of uh, that kind of week. Honestly, it is the spring blitz. It happens. So it's been a couple uh, weird years with COVID and 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 everything being kind of shut down and and working and slow and busy and slow and bit like it's just been odd yeah and so we really haven't had this in the past couple of years but it is very typical in the springtime we get this huge blitz of people that come in and it is just everything you can do to get the trucks ready in time and we are pushing our vendors and we are pushing ourselves and you know what i gotta say delina and melissa have done an amazing job of lining them up they have so good that now that the heat is on the heat is really on. The heat is on us so bad. We're turning trucks as quickly as we possibly can. Like you said, we're calling our vendors saying, hey, can I get a status update? And they're like, you just dropped the truck off 10 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, yeah. yeah, that job takes longer than 10 minutes. Right. Um, so, yeah, we, we've really been pushing really hard. So and I'm, I'm a little tired. I mean, not like going to fall asleep on the show again, but I'm a little, I'm a little tired. It's been rough. Well, you know, I think the coffee in the five-hour uh, helps – with that for sure it does but uh and not only that but just doing something like this which is fun that's it's always a blast especially when you're here with friends and the special guests we have for the day are great friends of ours um so i think today's episode is going to be really really fun 
and I hope you as listeners enjoy it. If you don't enjoy it, you can reach out to Matt and Jamie on their Facebook pages directly. and let them know yeah. directly how you feel about them. But other than that, uh, please let us know in your com- in the comments how much you like them. Listen, when we have guests, we always like to support them. So if you do uh, see them on Facebook, shout them out. Let them know, hey, you enjoyed them on the podcast or on the YouTube, however you're watching it. it uh, I'm sure it'll mean a lot to them, and it means a lot to us that you take care of our guests that way. Uh, Senor Jerome... How forth out have you been? Uh, we just discussed this. So I'm doing good. Yeah, but you didn't give us any any juicy gossip. You know, it's just been another day. I'm editing like crazy and just trying to stay busy. Yeah, but you came in a little, a little. You know what's going on? We'd like to help you. <laughs> There's nothing you could do. It's maybe a, it's maybe a bear intervention. Maybe you've heard of us. We're sponsored by worserhelp.com. <laughs> <laughs> this goes back to a question that I asked like on a previous podcast. Like Ray's assistant. R- what? Ray's or assistant. That would be wonderful. I don't understand how one has to do with the other. I don't get it either. I yeah. really don't. I yeah. said or. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Um, as your consigliere, I Senor? suggest you take that under advisement and not give a response here on the show. Take right. that under advisement, think about it, before, and respond at the, in the appropriate forum, which is not the show. That's just my consigliere advice. Thank you. Jerry, Let's get into it now. No. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do a wonderful job, and we appreciate you every week. The uh, people that don't know, behind the scenes, Jerry is editing these podcasts, and we're actually, we're doing a lot of recording. A lot. I don't I don't know that you understood how much it was going to be once you uh, came over here and did this. He is doing our podcast twice, uh, right now we're doing it twice a week, uh, trying to catch up. Um, and we're also doing the lives once a month, and we're also doing other people's podcasts and that you're helping with, on top of your shooting videos of truck tours, you're shooting videos of uh, how things on your truck work uh, so that people have references in case they're curious, like, hey, I don't know how to do this. You can just pull up a little video up and watch it. And uh, you're helping with the website. You, you redesigned the website and rebuilt it. And, of course, as soon as you did it, several members of my staff hated it and, and crapped all over it. And so you've had to go through and rebuild, adjust, and everything. It, I, I jest about that, it, it, you know. Everybody, we talked about this last week. Everybody within the Highfield group does a really good job of really wanting to pr- push to greatness, right? We know it's not attainable, but we can certainly try really hard to get to it. And so, when any of us do something and 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 it's like, hey, we can do it better, or hey, we want this, we're encouraged to speak our minds. So you've gotten some feedback that's been, uh, how do I put it? It's been critical, but not criticism. Does that make sense to you? Absolutely. Do you feel it's that way? Constructive or? criticism. That's it. That's the word I was looking for, constructive criticism. And uh, it has been quite the adventure. I mean, like, when do you sleep? I don't know. I, I don't know. I think I just sit at my computer editing and it goes <laughs> off and then I wake up and all of a sudden everything's done. Everything's done. Nice. Yeah. I will he say, sleep edits. I, I believe that. I will <laughs> say the nice thing is whenever you go to Jerry's house, 24-7, there is a pot of coffee on. And it's usually fresh. Amen. I mean... You know, at my house, uh, we have the Keurig machine. We have an espresso. So it's like, you want an espresso, you want a uh, a Keurig uh, or a cup of coffee, we can make you one of the Keurig. It, it's on demand. At his place, that won't do. It, you'd have a line waiting for it. So he <laughs> just, always has a pot ready. We just realized we buy the big bags from like Costco. And usually we do like Instacart or something like that because Costco is kind of far away from our house and we don't like going over there and fighting the traffic. So we'll just do an Instacart, have it delivered. And we have found that me and just me and Don, we're going through on average three pounds of coffee in a matter of like a week and a half, two weeks. Wow. 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 Like we're, we're doing on average at least two to three pots a day. So when I buy my, Nespresso pods. It's uh, 50 to a box. I don't drink espresso every day, so I had an automatic with Amazon once a quarter send me a new box. Like a month and 10 days in, I completely ran out. And I'm yeah. like, oh, this isn't going to work. So I went <laughs> online to reorder it. They're sold out. 
I'm like, uh, of course. Yeah. So I had to. I found you ever you ever done this where you go online and you like find a company that has what you're selling from, but it definitely looks sketchy. Yeah. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna order this, but I'm definitely putting it on a credit card that I know I can get my money back <laughs> on in any case this is a scam because I'm not positive I'm getting what I ordered. Spoiler alert: it actually was exactly what I thought it was going to be. It's not a scam, and I got my coffee and I got my espresso in the morning. But man, for a couple of weeks, I was like, "Oof, this is rough." Yeah. I love my routine is <clears throat> is go upstairs, you know, or, or I, uh, my bedroom's on the second floor, so I go there, take a shower, get everything, re- you know, all the stuff in the morning. Go downstairs, go to my uh, coffee maker, make an espresso. I take my daily pills, my vitamins, that kind of thing. And then uh, when that espresso is done, I just take it, I shoot it, and I put it directly in the dishwasher. Uh, and sometimes while I'm waiting on it to be uh, to brew, I will actually go ahead and empty my dishwasher and everything. So it's just like the day, like that's my routine every single morning. So you need and, to... Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So without that Nespresso, I've just felt like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> <laughs> you need to come over. You haven't been over to the house in a little bit. It has Ever, been a hot minute. Especially since we got our brand new coffee pot. I've just been waiting on an invite. Well, you're you're welcome. Absolutely. All of you are welcome. Um, but you do need to come over and let us make you a, uh, a, a a good cup of coffee because I have noticed that with this new pot, um, it truly does make a difference. It is um, the Specialty Coffee Association certified. It brews at the perfect temperature. It is way better than Nespresso or Keurig could ever do. What uh, what company is it? Uh, Breville. Oh, well, okay. That's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I got this oh. new car, y'all. It rides so smooth. It's yeah. really nice. It is uh, pure luxury. What brand is it? Bentley. Bentley. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to get worried that Melissa's going to watch this now and want a Breville. Because now that she's working from home, I'm wondering if I need to up, up our monthly Amazon coffee purchase. Because she likes her coffee. Yeah. And I'm wondering if now that she's at home, she's going to need more coffee. Oh, it makes it a probably. huge difference. No, yeah. bre- no Breville. That's that's not what I'm saying, Jerry. No Breville. Just more, more coffee beans. How about a bun? No, the Mr. Coffee's going to work just fine for her. Trust me. Oh, <laughs> I, listen. Ooh. Mr. Coffee wears out over time. Mr. Coffee I, would, can get replaced. I, 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 I can <laughs> replace the Mr. Coffee like 15 <laughs> times for the cost of the Breville. I understand that, but the bun... Hmm. The bun is great. So, have you ever had a bun? No, I've never had a bun. You, only, you, only when they make them, when they make, they have them, the commercial ones. Yeah. at the restaurants. So, my grandma, all my life growing up, we'd go to her house. She always drank Maxwell House or Folgers. So, you know, judge like you want to. I did, and so um, she, uh, but she had a bun. I didn't know that buns keep water hot. So when you're ready to make coffee, it's immediate mm. making coffee. Yeah. And then it just fills the reservoir up once it's done and, and gets that water hot. So you're not waiting on water to heat up. It, Quickly. It's extremely fast. And uh, it's awesome. I loved it. Now, I will say this. As soon as that went out, she bought a Mr. Coffee because that speed's not necessarily worth it. But yeah. it is super yeah. cool that, that it can do that. I'm I'm curious. I have a question. All right. Um, Jerry, now that you have this Breville coffee maker and you're going to force me to tell us a no... Any chance you've got space for an office or a desk for her at your place? You can just come Ooh. to your place and have coffee? She, he does. Yeah, we do. Well, there, there you go. Good deal. I'll talk to her about we're that. We're actually considering re, redoing some things. I've not said I'm going to do it yet, but we have considered uh, moving my office from the upstairs bedroom to the basement. Um, just because we have a lot of extra room over there. Right. Yeah. And uh, summertime's coming. We've already had a couple uh, warm days here yeah. in Columbus, and whenever it hit 80, 81, yeah, it was really, really toasty upstairs. We yeah. were trying not to turn the AC sure. on too early, and uh, so we're thinking about moving some things around. So, yeah, she'll she'll fit in Great. perfectly. I, I offered her our basement, but there's no natural light down there. It's dark. And yeah, just, so is ours. It, it, it's comfortable. It's not like it's, it smells of basement, fortunately, but she's at our kitchen table right now, and I think she needs a better space. Well, and not only that, when you have guest over, what have you. She didn't want to have to pick up her whole office right. and move it and everything. No, it, it makes sense. I, you know, I, I feel you on that heat thing. Yeah. So my house, you've stayed here quite a few times. I, we've all, we've all stayed here. Mm-hmm. Obviously I've, I've stayed here many, many times, but um, <laughs> everyone here stayed here quite a few times and, and the upstairs gets stupid hot. I mean, it's frustrating. I've got the real dramatic, you know, my living room has the uh, the second floor, like, has a balcony, and it's exposed, so I got real tall ceilings in there. 
And it looks really cool, but when you walk upstairs, you immediately feel that heat. It It's immediate. And um, it was crazy because, like, at night, when my dad was living here, when the, before they bought their house, my dad and my sister lived here for a few months, not much, uh, in the transition from Louisiana to, to Columbus. And um, he lived up upstairs where we do. It was so hot that at night we'd have to turn the temperature on the AC down to, like, 65 just to get the upstairs cool enough yeah. in the middle of summer. So um, that's to where our house was in Knoxville. So I'm hoping, yeah. I mean, this one's obviously much bigger. So I got a feeling we're going to be going through the same thing. But yeah, I, you know, a lot of people think it's trashy, but I have a portable air conditioner in my bedroom and that's what I use at night. That's how I'm able to stay comfortable. My air conditioner's on the, not on the fritz, it's working, uh, knock on wood. Um, but it's like <laughs> 30 years old. And it's an, uh, a, uh, what do they call it, geothermal air conditioner. So I don't have an outside unit. The uh, heat from the air conditioner goes through, like, water from the ground, and it actually flushes out. So uh, it's super, super efficient. But to replace it, it's like 30 grand. Wow. So I'm, I'm not wanting to do anything because I know any day now that's going to pop. And I'll be taking a credit card and getting a best interest I can and try to uh, replace it at that point. So I am super nervous. I don't want that to go out. They said it would go out within a year. Been here four years. Hadn't gone out yet. So this might be the year or it could last 10 more. Who knows? But uh, in my, but when I do that, I am going to rethink the air conditioning on the second floor or, because it's like, it's just too darn hot. Your house is big enough. You could probably do like a dual zone. Well, my thought is take replace this air conditioner with a slightly smaller unit and do the basement and first floor with it and then do a um a second air conditioner for the uh top floor yeah, because that makes sense. yeah, it just gets so hot. Uh and that and and they don't it's an older house and the uh they didn't really run the duct work. They didn't care about airflow, they care about aesthetics and it just doesn't work all that great. Hopefully not going to have to do that for a few more years, but we'll see. I uh, didn't plan on putting a new roof on it this past year, but I had to anyways. I feel like Matt and Jamie have been sitting over there long enough. They're like, what is going on? Why are they not why, talking why to us? Here? Why are we here? Um, you haven't really given you a lot of chance to uh, express yourself. So Matt and Jamie, you decide who goes first, but I want to know, how has your week been? It's been great. I mean, working and... You know, a couple of uh, shop, going to the shops a couple of times, as we all do with trucks. Yes. But, uh, you know, overall, things have been going good for us. And it's always fun because I always have to deal with him. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that I heard that Matt is a, uh, a, a gentle... Peach. A gentle... A <laughs> peach. <laughs> I was going to say a gentle uh, donkey. Um, nice. so, <laughs> uh, Vince, you got something to follow? I do. Yeah, Go ahead. Do. Go ahead, sir. I heard that, sir. Um, that um, Matt was a, um, uh, what's another name for John, like the nickname uh, Jack? Yes. Yeah, I heard yeah. Matt was a John um, donkey. I heard that. Nice. I, I heard... <laughs> Boy, this sounds like we're being bullies, doesn't it? He's going to need a tissue. He's going to start oh, crying. It really does. It really uh, does. No, but I did find it interesting when I found out that his dad originally wanted to name him Richard. I, and, you know, it probably was a good idea. He didn't because that would have been too obvious. That would have been a little too a little on the too nose. Obvious, a little yeah. too obvious. Yeah. 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 Well, uh, we we joke with Matt because we love him. We, oh, yeah. Love Absolutely. Him. He wouldn't be here. Absolutely. So Matt and Jamie, y'all, we've hung out so much. We, we've thrown down together uh Quite a few times. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, obviously, so those are the listening. It's like, oh my God, they're being so mean to one of their teams. Uh, no, we no. have, we no, have. We're being mean to Matt. We're being. <laughs> we're, we're never mean to Jamie. <laughs> no, Jamie's. A, uh, Jamie's. Jamie's wonderful. Well, uh, yeah, but you know what pisses me off about Jamie? She's married to Matt. No. <laughs> Every time we do a competition, uh-huh. she wins. Yeah, she does. Except for that one she time, does. right, Jerry? Uh, that's right. Yeah, but it was super, a... uh, <laughs> super competitive. Well, it's not even super competitive as much as it's talented. I was going to say, there's nothing Jamie can't do. There's uh, nothing. I was about to say the same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. 
I also say I don't really try. I just do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I think when you when you mentioned getting your roof redone, yeah, she was upset that you didn't call her. To I know redo the roof. I know she's so like, like I, got, I can do that. Yes, I, I got the equipment. The tools. Yeah, she's like I got a tall ladder in the truck. Right, I can just go to Home Depot, buy exactly. the shingles. Mm-hmm. Uh, take care, you know, take care of it. yeah, it'd be yeah. super. And you know what? I guarantee if she did, I'd have no nails on the freaking ground. No, because. The, it's None. funny. The roofers are like, "Oh, we're you know we never leave nails on the ground." Yeah, oh my right. gosh, we pulled out. I guarantee you can still find them. But we pulled up like a coffee can full. Wow, and those it are, wasn't. And filters. those are expensive nails. Are they? When they puncture your tire, oh, they're okay. expensive <laughs> nails. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. You have been with us for <clears throat> quite some time, and when I say with us, I do mean you've been a team uh, independent contractor with Highfield Trucking for quite a few years. Y'all have uh, really become your borderline legend status now at this point. Um, You started out in a straight truck. You've uh, moved on to being mentors. And now you're on your something truck and their truck. You've really had a a really wonderful uh, progression over the past few years. And I would love to know, A, when did you start? um, When did you start with us? I apologize. I'm not good with time. You know, just the other day could have been four years ago. Not too long ago. It's 10 years ago. So to me, I've known you for a while, mm-hmm. and, and I feel like we you've been with us for a long time. I want to say 20 years. But the company <laughs> hasn't been around that long, so I know right. it's not. Uh, so so when did you start with this? When did y'all come on board? Because, again, I'm just not good with dates. I apologize. That's okay. We originally made our uh, made our contact oh, with Highfield December 28th, 2018. December 28th, 2018. Yep. Okay, so Christmas just came and went. Mm-hmm. And let's change our entire life. In the, in the begin, well, in the beginning, we uh, we did tractor trailer. We drove tractor trailer, okay. and we worked for a couple of uh, predatory companies out there. When her and I were discussing it, I took about a year and a half of researching, expediting, watching videos, and eventually, she says, "Let's do that." And she goes, "Go ahead and make the call." So I'm like, "Okay." Well, a week had gone by, and I didn't make the call. And she says, did you call yet? And I said, nope. And then she made the phone call. Oh, nice. So it started It started out that way where, you know, just gathering information. And honestly, I took too long gathering information because of what we had been through. I yeah. should We should have leaped, you know, uh, at least a year earlier than what we did. Well, so that's, that's a story we hear from a lot of teams when they come out here. They're nervous about it. They don't come on right away because they're doing their research and trying to find out everything they possibly can. And they get here and they go, why didn't I do this sooner? Yeah, you know? exactly. Especially especially if you had a, com- a couple of companies that didn't treat you very well sure. and took advantage of you, you kind of become gun shy at that point. You're like, mm, you know. So what advice could you offer a new team that's in that position currently going, should I make the change? Should I not make the change? Anything that you can add to help them make that decision in well in my opinion i i over researched i got to the bottom of the barrel on that and i was still looking for more information even though i was satisfied with the information i got sure so i don't know why i procrastinated on that length of time but i had gotten the the information i needed sure and i I understand that it's it's hard to make that life changing decision whether it's trucking or any other industry it's hard to make that decision so yeah all right yeah so that was uh that was a big part and uh you know made the phone call from there we ended up scheduling orientation you know packed things up and to columbus we came nice nice so you you picked your truck up in columbus no we picked it up in uh green that's when when the trucks were being delivered at the uh the trucks weren't being delivered there but i do recall because we yeah, had they were not normally though. So we did that because we brought yours and the Cutchins up there. Yes. Yeah, we brought. Yeah, I remember that. Sorry. I know I misspoke. I said Columbus, meaning yeah, Akron, no, 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 no. Uh, green. I remember because we we took. Okay, so I. <sighs> Wait a minute. You got to think back. <sighs> Who brought the truck? Eric. Eric did because yes. I you were ill. I, 
Oh, was I ill? You were ill after a cruise. It happens. Yes. Oh! Oh, yes, sir. Uh, there we uh, go. It's it all coming back, back to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 What? Okay, wait. What year was that? 18? Or we, orientation, because we got things together, We our first week of orientation was February 18th. February so, 18th. So it was just after you got back and you were ill. In 2018. 2019. 2019. Yes. So we took out FedEx. I remember this very well. <laughs> so we um, we got back from uh, a cruise. We did a, a big cruise. There's a lot of people on it. My mom and dad went, uh, and we had uh, several other people with us. And we actually went up to FedEx immediately, right out of the cruise. A fleet owner meeting. I didn't. I didn't feel bad. Eric did. So Eric actually ended up staying at the how or at the at the uh, apartment back in Columbus. And I, uh, me and my dad, uh, went up to the meeting and. We went and sat through it, came back to Columbus, and when I got to Columbus, um, we got Donato's Pizza because my dad had never been to Columbus before, so he had never had Donato's Pizza. Those of you that have never had Donato's Pizza, it's delicious. It is outstanding pizza that is on the level of like Pizza Hut Domino's, it's that kind of chain, but the f- it's so much better. <laughs> it's it's really, really good. I, I encourage you, if you're ever in the um, north... Uh, Northeast, and you have a chance, or the Midwest, uh, go for it. But uh, so I got the Donna's pizza, and I was so mad because the Donna's pizza had no flavor. I was like, "Wow, this! I don't understand. They they must have screwed up. The, mm. the 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 pizza has no flavor at all." And I was I was legit angry. Well, the next morning I woke up, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I could I could die right now." Wow! I felt wow horrible. And it was my very first time having the flu. So I caught it on the boat. Eric had it. Uh, and then um, he got better because he didn't go to the fleet owners meeting. He was away from everybody and he was able to recover. And when I got back to Columbus, I then had the flu. Uh, sent dad home. And uh, actually, Eric had to take dad to the uh, airport because I couldn't do it. Then dad ended up having the flu down in, in, in Louisiana, and I had the flu in Columbus. And I, I just, I thought the flu was like a bad cold. I had no idea it was what it was. Yeah, I had the flu. Come to find out, we took out half the building. We took out half of FedEx Custom <laughs> Critical. It was a shame, and I feel bad about it. But we were patient zero, and we took out half the people. And I've talked to some people at FedEx since then, and they're like, oh, yeah, we remember that. Yep. And um, I now have learned, like, if I'm going to come out of a um, cruise, I'm not. I'm going to give myself a couple weeks before I do anything major because I don't want to. I don't want to do that again. But I also get a flu shot now. I always like, oh, flu shot. It's painful. I don't really want to do it. It it's, ain't the flu. It's free no. and it's not the <laughs> flu. Uh, jab me. I'm good. Yeah. It was. It was horrible. So I. Um, I definitely feel better about getting the flu shot now, and I haven't had it since, and I hope I never have it again. But, uh, yeah, that's where I was. I was literally just laying in the bed, just praying that God would take me. And he didn't, and I guess that's a good thing, but it was uh, whew, it was, it was so much worse than I thought it was going to be. It was really bad. Well, I think, also you, uh, I think you also had to put Eric in his uncomfortable zone because he doesn't u- usually, I guess, meet and greet at that time, and he came up and... Tell you what, he was a big help, and yeah. and Jamie had questions on paperwork and things like that, and he was drowning on the spot with it. You, you know, know, it wasn't his typical thing, but he did it. Like it great, it was it was something he did. Like Kelly and Jimmy, the same thing happened with them. Well, I wasn't sick that time, but I wasn't able to bring the truck to them. So Eric was actually the first person to bring the truck to him, and um, he met him for the first time, and I didn't meet him till they moved into their second truck. Like, that was a thing. We, at, at the time, we were based out of Louisiana. We knew freight was terrible in Louisiana for any carrier we worked with, and yeah. so we never asked people to come down there. We'd meet him in Memphis, or we'd meet him in, in Green, or very rarely, if it was made more sense, we'd meet him in the town they were at, but that, that was very few and far between. Um, because if you come to Louisiana, you're going to be here for a week. What's the point of having you come down to Louisiana? So it was very different. Now, now in Columbus... Every carrier has freight oh, yeah. going everywhere from here, yeah. so it, it just makes sense to bring people here. But that was that was a very different uh, situation we had, and it, um, you know, there'd be times where it's like, yeah, one truck has to go one place, one truck has to go another. It was a, f- it was fun. 
um, you know, since then we've we've grown a lot. We've got a lot more like SOPs and things like that. But but back then it was just everybody on deck. How how much can we uh, squeeze out of two people? And that's what we did. So it was fun. But you got a D eight eight a three, right? Yes. <clears throat> I remember that truck. So that truck was the very first brand new truck we ever bought. Good truck back when we were running Eminence. Uh, good money making truck. It was a very good money making truck for the time. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Solid truck. Then from there you went to C two seven three two. Yep. Yep. So that was a super C. Super C. Yeah. That that was a really cool truck. Now the the funny part with that is is uh, during orientation when it was time for the trucks you had two trucks there you had a C unit and a D unit, and I'm looking at the truck and me being the way that I am I'm like I want that D unit. Yeah. And there was kind of a joke going on. That was that, the first time around. The first time around. Yeah. Yeah. Eight eight zero three. And then uh, there was a joke that was going on at the time and and uh, Eric was holding keys in his hand behind his back. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He's like, he told me about this. Pick one. Yeah. And I'm like, so I tapped one, bring the keys out. It was the one that I wanted. Cool. But the funny thing is, we had uh, with uh, Joe and Candy, we had already talked about it. And I'm like, I want that truck over there. Yeah. And, and Joe and Candy, they are great people. And Joe's like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, you can have it. <laughs> so even if I would have picked the wrong hand, you know, the, I would have. Joe would have been like, yeah, go ahead, take yeah. that truck. And that, was, you know? and that was a little different time at FedEx, too. There was no yeah. load board. Um, so a D unit, C unit, there was no penalty. There was You could do both just fine. The D unit was cooler, though, because it had the bolt sleeper. It just looked nicer. and The Onan was nice and quiet. The Onan was nice and quiet. It had the fairings, which looked sharp. Did, did So back when you had it, 8803 had the fairings, so they covered most of the sleeper, uh, underneath the sleeper. Yep. Not quite all the way, but most of the way. Did, were they cracked yet? Did you have the um, fairing no. repair kit? No, no. it, was, it wasn't okay. cracked at all. So that truck, uh, we've sold it a couple years ago, a few years ago. Um, the fairings inevitably got cracked, as they do, uh, which is why we don't put them on trucks anymore. I used to tell people all the time, I'm like, all right, here's your fairing repair kit. You know what the fairing repair kit was? Okay. A, roll, a roll of white duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> I told him I said, "Look, when that when that duct tape gets old and nasty and worn out and you rip it off and put the new one on and the white matched the white of the fairing perfectly." I was so happy about that cuz I was nervous. I'm like, "Oh, is this going to look tacky or whatever?" You couldn't tell it was on there. It was crazy nice. how good it was. Duct tape is a little off white, you know. So it, it, it matched it, the it age matched of the perfect. Sun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was great. So, uh, it, right before we sold it, we actually I did bring it to the shop and had it fiberglassed and and painted properly and everything. So, whoever bought the truck from us ended up uh, getting a nice fiberglass completed fairing, but that was our go-to cuz they kept we did it we repaired them one time. And I mean, it wasn't like six months later they were cracked again. And I'm like, nope, not doing this anymore. But you couldn't have asked for a better truck. I mean, that truck, what a good experience. Because I mean, we've been in other trucks, you know, with another company prior yeah. and nightmares. Oh yeah. And and that one was not a look a problem. Well, in that truck too. I mean, I, I remember it very well. Again, it was our first brand new truck, so you don't forget that. I, I'm telling you, when we sold it, we probably had like 16 teams coming in and out of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it it had been. Through its paces and worked really hard. And well, Jackie um, and Mike, we talked about that too because yep. they said they were in that. And they they said that that truck was a good money maker. It was, you know, yeah, and, it was it was solid. And that was so. I remember when I bought it too. It had a lift axle on it, and we put the full size tires on it. We pumped it to stay down, and everybody was like, "Why would you do that? That doesn't make any sense, or whatever." And um, they quickly find out it 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 the the steers didn't get destroyed, the front end didn't get destroyed. The uh, lift axle could take the abuse over the years, and uh, it really made for a smooth riding, very good handling truck. It did, and especially the the area that we started out running in was was in the northeast, and a lot of the roads have that crown, yes. and and that having those axles in the rear really kept it from over swaying. Yep, like a normal you know single axle. Yeah, and, and then going good. and then going from that to C two seven three two that truck. I love that truck. That was one that I... Um, it I turned remember, sharper. I remember ordering that as well. It had a, uh, a, a slightly shorter wheelbase. It was only like 36 feet long or something like that. What, 38 feet long? Uh, thirty, Yeah, 38 because the box was only 18. That's why it was actually yeah. a C unit, not a, not yeah. a D because it was an 18-foot box. And it had that big 120-inch double-A mm -hmm. sleeper on it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Bowling alley. 
Yes. <laughs> I, <laughs> I remember being nervous when we uh, decided, okay, we're going to go D only after building, because we only built two of those trucks that were like that. And they were like, nah, let's go D only. If we're going to spend that much money, let's make sure we have a D unit. And uh, one of the things that I actually worked with Wayne on was how do you take everything in a 120 inch sleeper and put it in a one? I think we had to go, we had to lose six inches, so 114. And we were able to cut the bathroom down by three inches and cut the closet down by three inches and squeeze everything into a 114 inch. Uh, floor plan. Yeah, have a really comfortable truck with a shower and everything, and 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 still be able to maintain twenty foot of box that would satisfy our carrier's needs. And uh, but before that, the one twenties. I mean, the six inches doesn't sound like a lot, but it made a it's huge a difference. difference. Yeah, it's a big difference. Yeah. And, and do you remember why we came out of that truck? Uh, eight eight oh three. Why you came out of D eight oh three? Yeah, in the beginning. Now I'm testing you with all these trucks and everything that you had because I had a conversation and you, you offered up, said, hey, I know you're in a D unit, this one's a C unit, and you went through that whole spiel about, you know, you can still make the same revenue, which you were <laughs> you were right. We, we cranked out a lot of revenue in, in C2732. I don't recall. The Did biggest you? thing is, is another team was, was coming on and they actually needed the two beds, the two steps. Was that what it was? Bunk beds. Yeah. yeah. And they said, would you be willing to make a change since we're same household? They yeah. need the two beds. And Did, that was the whole reason why we came out of it to start with. Were, was Hugh already in that truck before you or after you? Mm, I'm trying uh, to think. Now we're digging way back in the archives. <laughs> Which truck are you talking about? So 2732. Were you directly after Frank or were you after Hugh? We were after, after Hugh. We, after they, Hugh. Okay. Yeah. yeah, they, yeah uh, we were the I third call. team in it. Yeah. He he was I mean, him and his wife, man, they were a great team. Uh I I love those people. They're down in um they have like a horse ranch down in um southern Arizona, right outside the Mexican border and everything. They were great hard workers. He's the one that um was in that truck when the one box the so the injectors uh, on the truck went bad. So Detroit back in the day, they did some like brass injectors and they didn't hold up well. Right. Uh, they don't do that anymore, but they, they did. And so they failed and they shot oil all through the engine and all through the emission system and took out the one box. Fabulous. They yeah. were down and they were like, hey, can you put us up in a hotel? And we said, sure. And they found a hotel. They were out in, uh, where's Virginia Bay Beach? That's North Carolina, right? Virginia Beach? Yeah, in North Carolina? Or no, I think it's it, South Carolina. Is South Carolina? I'm pretty sure it's in Virginia. Is it in Virginia? Yes. Yeah. Virginia. Virginia. Okay, so they were out there, <laughs> and uh, that's where their truck broke down, and they asked. I think they were in North Carolina when they broke down, though. I, I think that's pretty close. Okay. Anyways, so the truck broke down, and they, were, um, they asked, hey, can we uh, get this hotel in Virginia Beach, and... We're like, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And they were like, no, no, look. And, and it was like 100 bucks a night or something. Right. And it had a kitchen and everything. And we're like, yeah, sure. sure yeah. Why not? And uh, they ended up spending two weeks out there while they <laughs> wow. had to get the one box and everything replaced. So they had a great vacation while we had their truck in the shop. It was uh, it was, it was, was pretty wild for them. But um, then after that, the truck ran great. Um, that's why I say buy the extended warranty. Worth it. Mm -hmm. um, and then... Uh, so, so y'all were after them. Cool. Yeah. That was that was a really cool floor plan. It was a great truck. Only thing, looking back on it, and maybe it's a now thing and not so much a then thing. The cherry cabinets were a little dated, like a little like a more like a brown or a black oak. I think is a more uh, common. The cherry cabinets gave it a very early two thousands vibe, and then that countertop. That countertop was complete junk. Yeah. It was a Formica top. And it was not done well, and it uh, the corner just looked like garbage at the end of it. Typically now, so we have uh, the the two people who buy sleepers from now, they actually do a Formica Tops, but they do it much better than what they did back then. The new stuff is much, much better than what they were doing back then. But outside of that, I mean, it was a great truck. Beautiful riding truck. And yeah. then uh, the time came, and, and you got into the truck you're in now. Correct. Um. Another bathroom truck. It's a 120 bolt, which is not quite 120, but close enough. And uh, yeah, it's so funny. I remember when Matt came. Do you remember this? And you swapped into the D unit, 
I came by to see you and say hi. And and Jamie saw me. She stepped out of the truck and said, hey, hug my neck. And she was like, uh, I said, where's Matt? Right? She's like, inside. So I walk inside. Matt's laying on the floor on his back, head and arm half into a cabinet, <laughs> drilling into the brand new truck, <laughs> drilling with a DeWalt drill into it. And I'm like, what is happening here? Yeah. <laughs> yep, cabinet do- the Why cabinet doors, my, my, the wardrobe. My yeah, the wardrobe cabinet doors were off. They were laying on the bed area, <laughs> and he's like, "Hey," and it's like, "Hey, how you doing?" And he's like, "I gotta peek my head out." <laughs> yeah, I think Eric received a, a text and a picture on that one. You know, he's already destroying the new truck. I know, right? <laughs> Had to get shelving in priorities. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. It's one thing I think the bolts. I do love the bolt sleepers. I love their safety. Uh, if you go online, you can actually find uh, pictures of a bolt sleeper where the truck's rolled over and they hold their shape just yeah. fine. They protect the occupants. Like bolt builds a very safe truck uh, uh, sleeper, uh, but they do definitely lack when it comes to storage. They give you big, huge open compartments. Right. They don't give yeah. you a lot of shelves, and so it is very common for people to put. Either like those plastic um, stackable shelves, stackable shelves, yeah. or to actually put in the uh, like what Matt did with yeah. the uh, the track and then the adjustable right. shelves. We ended up putting um, so some, sometimes you, you mentioned that they're just huge. Sometimes there's no separation side to side. Yes. Uh, so we ended up kind of putting a wall in one of our cabinets just so we had that separation, so things weren't sliding back and forth all the time. Yeah. Okay. I, you definitely have to build them. You know. Custom. Set your truck up the way that you want. Oh, yeah. You know, you, it's, it's your home. Definitely. I mean, so you want it comfort and usable. Absolutely. And y'all are great at organization. I've been in their truck a f- few times. I remember the very first time I ever crawled into Matt and Jamie's truck. It was at the expo uh, in Fort Wayne back in like 2019. 2019. It was 2019. Having some lobster rolls. And <laughs> yes, they were like, hey, we heard you like lobster rolls, which I love lobster rolls. I'm a huge lobster roll fan. And they're like, hey, we heard you, lob- you like lobster rolls. And I was like, uh, okay. That's my <laughs> that's my uh, cargo van with free candy on the side of it is lobster right. rolls. So yeah. I jump in, and the first thing I notice when I walk in, I'm like, this is like Pier 1. It's like no one lives here. <laughs> and then uh, so it's I walk. It's a model truck. It's a model truck. Uh, yeah, there's <laughs> there's nobody nobody lives here. So I walk over, I sit in the, the dinette set, and... Um, Jamie pulls out every little thing is organized, and she brings out uh, the, the lobster salad and all this stuff. It makes me a nice lobster roll, and I eat it, and it's outstanding. She gives me another one. It's also outstanding, and then I'm like, I have to stop now because I'll eat a thousand more of these if you let me. <laughs> and she's like, one more. <laughs> <laughs> she's a pusher. And so um, that was my first time ever getting into one of their trucks, and it was it was remarkable to see how well organized and thought out y'all had everything, and you've just continued that. There's been quite a few people... Uh, that I've checked out your sleepers over the road. And, uh, you know, one thing I forgot to mention was a couple weeks ago when we went to, Eric and I flew out to Bordentown, New Jersey. Y'all were the ones that actually were throwing down the uh, tailgate party out at Bordentown's Loves. It was a wonderful spread. I really enjoyed it. Uh, everybody was so happy, and it was a great time for people to talk shop, you know, loads, this, that, or the other, the frustrations they're going through and be able to get it off their chest and also get some advice on, hey, here's how to handle that if that happens, and then also get a belly full of food. I mean, not Wendy's or what's, what's Iron Skill, is that what's across the street? Yeah. 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 Uh, full of grease and all that you know, garbage that you're not supposed to have, but you actually, so the first night you were there, you brought your Blackstone out. Yes. And you made... Hibachi. Hibachi. Mm. Oh, Eric and I knew we were going to fly out there, and I knew you were going to do hibachi, and we were excited. I'm like, all right, I get to have hibachi. I've had your grilling before, and I've had your smoking, and I'm like, all right, cool, we're going to have hibachi. I look on Facebook at night, the night before we're leaving, and it's like, here you're having hibachi, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till I get there, Wait even till... though you don't know I'm coming. Exactly. Um, exactly. <laughs> so um, you did hibachi the next day, so we did actually show up, and... Uh, we didn't tell you we were coming. Did y'all have a clue? No. Not a clue. Because no. I, I remember texting you, asking you, hey, what are you, are you concerned about the weather? Are you concerned about... Well, mostly the weather, because the weather was going to get kind of nasty, and so we'll I was deal curious. deal with it. That's exactly what you said. I was afraid I was giving away too much. I really didn't want you to know that, hey, this is what I was thinking about doing, and um, it sounds like y'all had no clue. No. 
No, we were we were shocked because when I saw you walk around the truck and you're doing that crouching look around as you walked around, I was looking and I'm like just completely dumbfounded and then Eric comes walking right behind you and it's like, Whoa. Yeah. What are you guys doing here? Yeah. You checking up on us? <laughs> well, yeah. well, I get there. And it's a, it's a police. No. Uh, I uh, now I got there and, and and just wanted to hang out with y'all. And and I've seen y'all do this. Y'all did it all last summer, and it was a big hit. And and I wanted to come out and support you then, and it wasn't able to. So it was it was great to be able to come out and do it this time. I got there and I, and I look over and it, you got two Traegers going, but then one looks different than the other. After we had our pleasantries and you know hugged hugged each other's necks and all that good stuff, you talked about how. No. Why does this ha- always happen? It happened last time. Foreman. Robert, Robert Foreman. Robert Foreman. Sorry, Robert. I apologize. Robert, uh, you, you explained how it's like, oh, no, it's his his grill. Yeah. And so y'all had a barbecue competition going on right in front of me. It was to see which how which, which one would work, do what, which one was better, if one was better. They both were, were really good. I mean... So they- Go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, I, I asked Matt about this yesterday when he came through the yard. Yeah. Because I was curious. I, I've seen the, um, the the Pit Boss and the Traeger. Yeah. I have a Traeger. Uh, yeah. The Pit Boss price is less than the Traeger. Yeah. Uh, but I was asking Matt, but, you know, I, I've, I've only seen them. I've read the specs, but I don't know how it cooks. So apparently with the Pit Boss, you get more cooking surface, surface. but less pellet storage. So, so you're you, refilling more frequently. Yeah, and if you want to do a long smoke, you don't have as much. <clears throat> right. You have to make sure you get up and, and yeah. add mm-hmm. pellets. But I, I was curious about that as well, just the, the, the differences between the two. So. Well, I'm going to tell you the final product was delicious. Good. You couldn't uh, tell the difference uh, between the two, could you? you couldn't, no, no. But that, that, that's two masters, you know, working uh, at the at the uh, grill. So, I mean, I'd like to see what an amateur like myself can pull off. No, the, the food was great. The company was great. Um, it did end up storming and we had to seek shelter. It was a lot of fun and y'all, your hospitality was outstanding. So my favorite part, or not favorite part, one great thing that did happen was the next day, Sunday morning for lunch, uh, we had to leave pretty early out of there because of our flight home. Eric uh, had lunch and you cooked lunch and he was able to have the full hibachi. I was not able to have the full hibachi, just timing and, and what I'm doing. And uh, but I did grab several pieces of the steak and the chicken, and it was outstanding. And I look forward to the next time you do hibachi, and hopefully I'll be there for it because it was outstanding. Your uh, the skill you bring to the table as far as being a good, great cook and and a, a great um, prep cook uh, and 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 the sides and everything. I mean. So on top of being great hosts, you also produce great food, and, and it was very appreciated. Yeah, I just want to thank you openly here, now that you're here. This wasn't planned. I didn't know you were going to be here until a couple hours ago. We're genuinely, it was great. I appreciate it. And uh, I think there'll be more of these to come. I think I think it was fantastic because also, you know, with the prepping, which takes a lot of work to prep for, for that evening, but, yeah. you know, also, you know, Bobby was up at what? Uh, Five o'clock. Five o'clock with me out there. We're out there. I got my ego, big old ten thousand lumen light, so we could see what was going on. <laughs> and we're, and we're getting everything prepped and everything. And then later on, as people started arriving, when it came breakfast time, I tell you what, Neil Royer came out. That's right. And he helped with breakfast, and uh, I started doing the bacon. And Chef then we Neil moved this. Oh yeah. And you know what? There's a couple of things he did with eggs, and I'm like, wow, that was really cool how he did that, flipping them and. Even when he took the rings, he, he just gave it a throw, and I'm like, that just flopped over. Usually I'm going like this. <laughs> he, just, he just rolled it, and I'm like, taught, it is, he taught me. It, you is, know. it is so much fun watching a master at their craft, isn't it? But we were laughing. It was a good time yeah. and making jokes. And, Absolutely. You know, it, it, that's what it was all about. The whole gathering is, you know, some people said it was like camping. It's a break out of the truck. Yeah. Kind of, kind of a breather. Absolutely. And, and those times are, I mean, it's it's one of the things I love about expediting is the lifestyle it gives you. You know, you can be at a truck stop with half a dozen other uh, FedEx trucks. And there were people there that weren't with Highfield, like several people. Yes. In that community and that hanging out together, you know, it didn't matter that we weren't all working with the same company. We were all 
uh, mutually doing the same thing, same job, same lifestyle, hanging out, having a good time. I really enjoyed that a lot. Going from that to if you're out and maybe you're in a spot where there's not a lot of people or maybe you want to go camping, you can go camping for the weekend or like in Vegas. Vegas is one of those places that I love getting a chance to go to. I know, Jerry, you're more Reno than, than Vegas, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, Vegas is it was always our hot spot. And finding those places that allow truck parking uh, and being able to go out and explore uh, the city for the weekend or, or just have relaxing um, time at one of the hotels, like that, the lifestyle side of this business is outstanding. There is a uh, huge uh, camaraderie. And there's also a huge chance to, or, or a large chance to go out and do things that you just can't do in a regular bobtail. You can't do in a regular tractor trailer. So I definitely appreciate what y'all do, and, and it was a lot of fun. We do have, real quick, a story that uh, Vince and I saw when we were looking at that we wanted to uh, let everybody know uh, or just talk about for a second because I have some thoughts on this. And uh, it's an interesting situation. General Motors, they're a small automaker. Uh, I think they're out of Detroit, right? I think so, but, but they're so small, it's it's hard to it's tell. It's hard to say. It really um, they own just a couple small companies like GMC, Chevrolet, uh, Cadillac. Cadillac. Uh, they used to own Pontiac Buick. and Elsaville. Buick. Yeah. Buick. Oh, how can you forget Buick? Love a Buick. I love the ride of a Buick. Like, I don't want to feel anything. <laughs> Buick. That should be their model. That is not a motto. <laughs> <laughs> Buick. I don't want to feel anything. <laughs> Love it. I think heroin stole that already. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you remember Valor? Anyways. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I read this article on Freight Waves. General Motors recalls 40,000 Navistar built trucks for fire risk. 40 thousand trucks in jeopardy of catching on fire. You know, when I saw that headline, GM recalls 40,000 Navistar built trucks, I was like, GM? What, what, I don't, I don't understand what are they talking about? GM doesn't make Navistar trucks, they make GM trucks. Correct. I don't get it, so. Um, Can I give you a little backstory? I'd love to hear backstory. But Navistar used to be international, right? Uh, they still are. So <laughs> Navistar owns uh, international and uh, Volkswagen Group owns them now, but Navistar used to build prior to like 2015 or so, give or take a couple of years. They used, I think 2012 actually, they used to build all of the um, Power Stroke diesel engines for Ford. Really? Right. Yeah, I knew that. So Ford. if you have an older Ford with a Power Stroke diesel, Navistar built it. Hmm. If you had a uh, large Class 7 truck, Navistar also built those. Like the F650, F750, they built them down in Mexico at a Navistar plant, and uh, they put the Ford logos on or whatever, but it was a Ford, I mean, it was a Navistar product. They actually built it, and they were contracting for that. Right. The 6.4 liter diesel that Navistar put out for Ford was a train wreck. It was horrible. <sighs> It, it was an absolutely terrible engine, and it garnered them terrible reviews. And just before that, they had a 6.0 liter power truck uh, diesel, also terrible. So mm -hmm. after, you know, almost almost 10 years, or maybe even a little more than 10 years, of, of dealing with these train wreck of, of Navistar diesels to deal with the new emissions, Ford was like, screw it, we're going to go back to building diesels ourselves. So that's the uh, Scorpion, which is the six point seven liter diesel uh that Ford makes out now, they make it themselves. That's actually so a Ford they product. A lesson. Yes. And so they took back the F six fifty, F F seven fifty, they now make it themselves. Kind of left Navistar Navistar with like nobody to work with. Well, GM and Chevy saw that option and said, Hey, maybe you could build trucks for us. And so they took uh, Navistar was like, sure, why not? So now you can buy a uh, a GMC Silverado, or sorry, Chevrolet, Chevrolet Silverado, uh, I think 4,555, 6,500, something like that, or a GMC, whatever the equivalent is for GMC. It's really a Navistar-built truck with a Navistar engine. And, or, I'm sorry, this might actually be a, a GM engine. 
Uh, but but Navistar builds everything for them. And so um, that's kind of how they got in the situation they're in. So this was originally basically a Ford product, and GM uh, took over after Ford abandoned um, Navistar. And that's that's kind of how we got where we're at now. Apparently, there's 40,428. That's a specific number. It right really there. is, yeah. Um, the brake fluid, so it's hydraulic brakes. So if you have an air brake version of this truck, doesn't apply to you. The hydraulic brakes... The brake fluid can leak into a pressure s- sensor assembly and cause a fire. From 2019 to 2023, the 4,500, 5,500, and 6,500 trucks, they had 11 instances of fire uh, where that actually occurred. The highway uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration said that there were no injuries or accidents because of it, but there were still fires. So they are recalling all those trucks. They actually have a do not drive notice out to everyone for it, which means it's such a a strong recall that we don't want you even driving the truck. We'll just come tell you, bring it to a shop and get that fixed. It's such a major safety issue. They don't want those trucks being out there to possibly have this fire start. That's crazy because you remember when the airbag situation was happening where if an airbag deployed, it would uh, basically blow shrapnel in your face. Mm -hmm. That was was not a do not drive. This is a immediately do not drive. I'm just thinking about, you know, a lot of like landscaping companies oh, and sure. small dump trucks and tow truck companies, yeah. they all um, use these trucks. Imagine just being told like, hey, you can't use it anymore. Uh, bring, uh, We'll have it towed to our shop and we'll get it back to you in a few weeks. Yeah, these are all commercial vehicles. These are not, these are not everyday drivers for most people. Correct. These people using these things for for operate businesses. I mean, they're medium duty trucks. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, that's that's a burden for a lot of people, a lot of small businesses that are doing those types of things. I can't imagine. So I will, I bring it up because uh, Matt and Jamie in years past in a life uh, yonder past, y'all ran a a wrecking company. Mm -hmm. And can you imagine if you got an order from GM and they said, Hey, that wrecker that you make your money with, don't use it again until we get it fixed. Well, actually in, in my fly bid, that's how I found out my international was actually a Ford mortar. When, when I was doing research and getting injectors for it, and yeah. it was like, I'm like, Ford? And, oh, okay. Yeah. And it took me a minute. So when you were talking about it and you were talking about GM, I was like, yeah, yeah. I had that going with it. But I mean, so just imagine back when you were running your company yeah. and you get this notice from GM, don't use your record again. What is the thought that goes to your mind? It's your, it's how you make your money. It's how are you going to pay the truck now? Because that's the thing too is, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can't pay the notice. You GM, can't pay money. Uh, GMAC, I think is the company that does their the financing. financing. Yeah. Uh, BMO, which does a lot of truck uh, lending and stuff. They don't care. No. 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 They want their money. No. Then you get loss of income. Yeah. Yeah. And then depending on availability for the recall, for the repair, the time that you're down, it is it's it's really hard. I mean, at that point, yeah. a lot of these guys, like you said, landscapers and right. stuff like that. I mean, that is that's their livelihood. I, I can hear that phone call coming to you right now. Uh, can you not drive your wrecker because it's got a recall? We'll send a wrecker to pick up your wrecker exactly. to get it repaired. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, exactly. An interesting thing here too is that dealers are notified of the recall on April 13th. Customer letters aren't being mailed till May 29th. That is interesting. It, it, I, I wonder if it's a typo because it's a long... I don't think it is. It, I don't think it is either, but it's, it's, a, it's a month and a half before the customer get the letter, and it's a do not drive order that they're putting out. Right, but even with a you know, do not drive order, you think about all the years of vehicles that you own and how many recalls was on your oh, vehicle, sure. and you knew zero. Nothing, nothing you about knew it. Yeah. nothing yeah. about it. Yep. You never were notified. Right. This is a pretty serious recall. It is. I mean, I it's very serious. I agree. Well, so we get, um, with all of our trucks... We get recalls all the time. All the time. Like, you can't imagine. It's like all the time we get recalls. <laughs> I know it's funny. It's like, I just spent 300 grand on a truck. What do you mean it's got a recall? Yeah. All the That time. happened with the tractor. It did. Yes. Yeah. I went yeah. in for a recall, and I'm like, okay, go in for a recall. And they're like, we got three recalls. So mm-hmm. while your truck is in yeah. here, we'll get them we'll all do done all for you. I'm yeah. like... Okay. <laughs> it, ha- it happens all the time. I take yeah. trucks into fighter for something in a, a, a Freightliner. And they're like, oh, we got these recalls. We'll take care of these for you as well. So it happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. We get, uh, so every time we get the recall notices in, and I'm, I'm telling you, it's two or three times a month. It's very frequent. 
Um, and we've got a, a wide variety of, of trucks. We got everything. I think our oldest truck is a 2018, maybe at this point. And then our newest truck, obviously, being like a 2023, and we're about to get some 2024s in. And so we get a wide variety of, of recalls. And, and um, because our maintenance staff, like we don't have an office, we, we, we run, everybody works from home. Uh, Eric gets those recall notices and he scans them in the computer and he sends them out to the maintenance staff. And then the maintenance correlate, uh, coordinates that with the drivers to get those recalls accomplished. And sometimes they're minor, sometimes they're very major. And uh, none of them, none of them so far have been a do not drive, but some of them have been um, more serious. So like there was a recall for, I think it was a gas pedal that would get stuck. It was serious because it's gas pedal gets stuck. Like you don't want to keep revving your engine when you don't want it to. Right. Um, but the brakes would overpower it. So it wasn't as critical. And so they, they, they took it pretty serious, but we, we got it done. But there have been all kinds of all kinds of sometimes the recalls are literally just put eyes on this and make sure it's torqued to the right yeah. this bolt's torqued to the right thing. We had that recently with the M twos where it was Yes. Uh the the uh crown uh cotter the, pin. The, the cotter pin on the on the st- Steering shaft. Steering, yeah. Yeah. Steering uh, and that was, I, I don't envy the maintenance staff at all when that one came through because it wasn't all the M2s. It was, it was only certain M2s. It was a lot of them. Yeah. We had to do, in ops, we had to take seven or eight. Yeah. And it was, we, just, we, we, saw, we rotated them around and they got, they got taken care of pretty quickly, but it was one of those of put eyes on it, make sure it's torqued to the right specs, yeah. replace the cotter pin. Yeah. It was about 25 trucks. And of those 25 trucks, of course, we did have one, only one. That actually had to have a whole new steering hmm. linkage installed and all that other stuff. It was a real disaster. Was it the one you picked up? It was not. It was one. So all these trucks that are in our in our um, like getting prepped for new teams, everyone was fine. It was the one that had or one of the ones that had a team in it that was just coming in to get the thing looked at. They actually had to have it replaced, and it was like, oh, you got to be kidding me! And of course. They didn't have the parts. Of course not. So I think that's why you asked about uh, they're letting the uh, they're letting the companies know prior to the sure. general public is because they want to make sure they start ordering those parts and get them in it, because the dealerships know how many they've sold. They know about what they need inventory wise right. because I guarantee you there's not enough stock for them to send every dealership a certain a, number a of part them. for yeah. each one. And then you, you may not go to the dealership it was sold at also, right? If you're out on the road and you bought your truck here in Columbus, Correct. you may be in Las Vegas and now you have to get a repair it there. Uh, and yep. think about, too, we don't just have recalls on the truck. We have recalls on other parts as well. Yes. We had one just this, this winter on the uh, carrier AP, carrier reefer units. Yeah. I took the truck. We only have a few carrier reefers in, the, in, in our fleet. I took the truck that I had in ops uh, over to the carrier de- dealership, and the guy looks at me and he goes, we don't have parts for that recall yet. Yeah. We won't have them for about three weeks. Yeah. He says, I can try and put a kit together for you, but I'll have to let you know. And fortunately, that truck wasn't going out for another couple of weeks, so we were able to leave it with him to have it repaired. But things like APUs, reefer units, um, the TCUs, excuse me, um, all kinds of things in the truck yeah. could, could certainly have a recall that shuts us down. Absolutely. We had a, a pretty major recall done uh, a few years ago on our lift axles. There was a certain brand of lift axle that we were buying, and we had to have a bunch of them brought back because the U-bolts on them were snapping, and they just replaced them with new U-bolts. They did have to actually put a metal plate on there to, um, I guess, strengthen it and put, yeah. a, and put, and put the new U-bolt on. And uh, after that, we never had an issue with them again. So it, it, it worked, but it was... You know, it, it's a little frustrating because when you get a truck and you want to go driving, the last thing, the very dead last thing you want to do is go into a shop. And for a new team, it's discouraging. Sure. For an, for a, a senior team, it's like, okay, well, this is just <clears throat> what we do. Like, if we're going to be in a truck like this, it, it's going to break down and we're going to have to go get it fixed. And if you're out there running for like a major company like Swift or a Prime or someone, you're thinking like, oh, I bring it back to the yard. I just get another one. Nope. These trucks have custom sleepers on. They really become home. Yep. Uh, we've seen some all kinds of custom work that people have done. We had one recently where they tiled the uh, back, the backsplash, the backsplash and, the and, and the refrigerator yeah. uh, with this stainless steel tile that was. It looked really sharp. Um, I've gotten them. We've gotten them back with all kinds of crazy stuff. That's uh, it's your home. It's it's where you're gonna live. You know. I mean, like a lot of people have their houses, but some people don't. Some people yeah. give it on the road. They see these trucks and they're like, I don't. Why am I wasting money on an apartment? 
Um, doesn't make sense when you have that that home in the truck. It really doesn't. You've got to downsize. It, it's a little hard for some folks to downsize, but if you can do it, why not? Absolutely. Why not? Well, I want to ask a question. Um, if you could tell someone who's thinking about, hey, we're going to get into trucking, we're going to go drive a straight truck, we're going to go drive a, uh, uh, for um, in a custom sleeper and, and all that, what advice would you give them? You've been out here a long time. You kind of have an idea of what you want, uh, of what's going on. Kind of have an idea. <laughs> I asked you. By this time, you guys you are getting a grasp you're on you're it. You're starting, understanding you're starting your, to understand yeah. what's going uh, on. Always learning. Uh, um, <laughs> no. Uh, what would your advice be? What would you tell people? How would you direct them? Because you have, at this point, attained a goal that I think we're all looking for, which is wisdom. Yeah, I'd like to you hear to what. First, you what first? Yeah, what okay. do you what 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 do you see all the time that you're like, oh, this. I wish people knew. Fill in the blank. I think, uh, far as as Vince said, wisdom. My opinion on that is the wisdom that we get as mentors out here, far as with teams, the wisdom we get is their success and also their fails. When a team does something and we're not even sure if it would work, and I think Jerry could probably step in on this. There's stuff that you learn from your teams out there. Absolutely. You learn from their success. You learn from their failures. And we try to pass that wisdom on so we can make sure teams are successful and not have those, you know, those trials by fire errors out there that financially hurt. When you make a $2,000 mess up, sure. it, that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> you know? So that's, that's kind of, as far as coming out here, don't procrastinate. Do your information. Do you know? Get your information. Do your research. You know, and and make it happen. Sitting on it, just like I said, I wish I didn't sit as long as we did. I, I think that's one aspect of the mentor program people don't realize is that yes, the the mentors have been doing this and they're they're experienced with it. But the mentors that I know personally, that I've talked to personally, they all say to a person that they learn from their mentees that they recognize they don't know everything yep. and they learn from their mentees, whether it's a new way of doing something on their truck or a, a, a new information from a dispatcher that's been shared with them. Uh, they're always learning stuff and then they're able to share that also with other mentees or other mentors or other teams they come across. So that's, that's a good piece of advice. Yeah. And, and the good part is you sp spoke about, you know, with, with logistics, the peak and valleys that are going on is sometimes some teams have a have a harder time adjusting what they learned sure. and learn to adapt and overcome oh, yeah. and that's where yeah. we can come into play even though a team had graduated from us is to get a hold of them and say hey just checking out seeing how you're doing right. this is what's going on and and you know to, to help them out because sometimes it's hard to see the change you think sure. it's a small change and it's a little longer than what you thought it would have been absolutely well i think we all our human nature is to embrace the chicken little, the sky is falling. The sky is falling, right? When our normal gets upset, that's that's our default. And I I, I don't I don't think that's something that we um, eradicate from ourselves. We just have to acknowledge when that happens sure. because it's a good yeah. it's a good impulse. It's a good hey something's not right. I need to fix it. Mm -hmm. And then you step back and you look at seasonal peaks and valleys. And you go oh okay that makes sense. So as long as you can take the terrifying feeling and then and then uh, rationalize it with the normal cyclical uh, nature of freight or or whatever it may be, then I think it's fine. When you can't normalize it and it, it doesn't add up, that's when you have to go like, okay, something's wrong, and that's when our 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 uh, flight or fight kicks in, right? right? That's when that nature happens. I think that's good advice for anything really though is when you see something that's different. Yes. As opposed to reacting, look look into it a little deeper and see why it's different and 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 think it through and then react. Yes. And by react I don't mean do something rash, but just make your changes. Yeah. Um, based on thinking that process through. 100%. Yeah. Well, I would say uh, just for anybody coming into it, just do your research, but don't drag on too long where you feel like we did where you didn't do it soon enough 
Um, also look into all the different companies, not just Highfield, but everywhere. Um, just make sure that they have what you want to get out of the business, What, whether it's mentees or mentors, um, just how to learn the process that they have to offer you. Look at some of their track records, you know. Also for couples, whether it's male, female, male, male, female, female, make sure that it's a good fit for you and your partner that you can live in a small oh, space. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. For twenty four seven. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And be okay to deal with issues all the time. Always talk to each other, work things out, and yeah. give commu- each other spaces when they need them. That communication is key, yeah. certainly. Yeah. Oh, it's huge. I know when I first got started in this, um, one of the things I looked at was there's a, someone who's asking like, hey. Me, me and my wife are you know, thinking about getting this business, and we're just not sure should we do it or not. Uh, need some advice. And one person said, and I, and everybody co-signed it, and I loved it. Was he said, okay, you and your wife, for the next week, live in your walk-in closet, <laughs> sleep in your walk-in closet. Yeah. Get and the guy even said like, well, I don't have a bathroom. What you know? I guess we can go to the bathroom. And he's like, and they were like, you don't have a bathroom in your truck. No. Side note. Our high performers do have bathrooms in their trucks, but getting in the business, assume you don't, you know, put down a mattress in your walk-in closet and try to make that work. And and that's what they, that's what they, the advice they gave them. And I thought it was great. Now, granted, our trucks are a little bigger than walk-in closets, but still the, the mentality stands, right? Of like, how do you live in a small space with this person that you love? Because I've been around it long enough to see people fall more in love with each other. Mm-hmm. I've, I've been around it long enough to see people really uh, embrace the lifestyle and they love they get to work with their partner yep. and, it, and it's all it's great. I've seen people get divorced over it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you really you really have to make sure, hey, this is the right lifestyle. And if it's not, you got to be able to get out. I mean, look, at the end of the day, we want every single team to be successful and be a lifelong um, independent contractor or maybe an owner-operator and like that's the trajectory we, we want people to do. We want to see people grow and get better and uh, more successful in this business. We uh, have a, a team right now that's becoming fleet owners and we're very thrilled with it. Like that's, that's great. I mean, you, you know, you came to us as independent contractors, you bought a truck and now you're buying your, your second and third truck. Like that's exciting. That is really cool to see that growth. At the end of the day though, if it's going to cost your relationship or your marriage, get out of the truck, Yeah, leave, leave. go home, get normal jobs, yep. whatever makes you uh, have your, uh, life makes sense because I get it. Sometimes we love people, but we can't be around them twenty four seven. No, hundred percent. And you're right there. Sometimes on the weekends, like all summer, when we ha- we were doing these cookouts, yeah, and and teams would show up, you'd see the separation go on. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd see people yeah. just gather, and a lot of times, you know, the couples or teammates would be separated. You yeah. know, and and it just gave them a break, so they'd have something new to talk about too <laughs> when they get well, back on absolutely. the truck. When Melissa and I would get a hotel room occasionally, um, I made sure the hotel room had a chair. Yeah. And Melissa likes to sit in the bed and do what she's doing, and I would go sit in the chair. And just that little bit of separation even mm-hmm. was yeah. enough. We had more space to to, to kind of spread our wings a little bit and just have our own little little space. We were in the same room still, you know, a, time, yeah. a lot of times, but. We had that space. It, it, it made sense. We didn't do it very often, but we did other stuff too. So, well, but it was just having that space. Every night. We actually took it a step further. Me and Don would actually have to get two separate bedrooms. Wow. Yeah, we we needed that. Yeah. Yeah. That time. Yep. You need it sometimes. Was that at the casinos? <laughs> Some of them. I was just asking. <laughs> yeah. Look, I I I I get it. You got to you got to figure out what that balance is. You got to do what you got to do. I know there was a time. <laughs> One of my more shameful moments where Eric and I were driving. We're in, in uh, New York, like upper New York, Burn Buffalo, and it things just came to a head. And I was like, peace, got a rental car. I drove all the way to Buffalo, slept the night in Buffalo, and was like, all right, I over I, I overdid it. Like, this is not what I want. I just, I was a combination of, of tired and exhausted and angry and just cooped up in a space too long and once I had a chance to get away from it and breathe then I was like no this is the lifestyle I want mm-hmm. this is what I want to do yeah. and then I had to make that embarrassing phone call back and be like yeah I screwed up sorry yeah. and 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 we got uh got everything back together and it worked out fine but it's like 
knowing when to uh, get that personal time. And, and it's tough because you feel like, hey, I'm, I'm letting my person down because I'm saying I don't want to be around you. And, and what's more insulting than that? But it's like, no, when, you, when you're 24-7 together, you got to have that personal gotta time. That you got to be get away. Yeah. You got to have a little bit of break. It didn't matter if you're friends, if you're lovers, if you're uh, uh, you just met each other just so you could drive in a truck together. I mean, <laughs> no matter what, you've got to have a little yeah. space apart and, and, and balancing that. And if you can't find the balance and it just doesn't work, that's fine. We get it. Yep. We completely respect your, your, your situation and no hard feelings. I always say at least you gave it a go. You know, at least at least you tried it, and if it didn't work, that's fine. And we guess what? We've had people who it didn't work for mm-hmm. at all. And a year later, they call us back and say, we want to give it another shot. And that second time around, it does, because they know what they're getting into. They're right. more prepared. And they're more yeah. prepared, exactly. So all that to say, today's airplane of the week is a <laughs> Delta 757-200. Now, this is... One of my favorite airplanes that they fly, and its years, unfortunately, are getting limited. So uh, this is a, uh, it's about the size of a 737. So if you've ever flown an airplane that's three and three, like three seats and then an aisle and three seats, it's about that size, but it's a little bit longer. It has a much further distance. So they usually use these for like transcontinental, like if you're flying from like New York to Los Angeles or Atlanta to uh, San Diego or something, they'll usually put that on this route. These things always run from Atlanta to Orlando. That's almost exclusively what Delta uses. And um, it's a really cool airplane. I like this a lot. So this thing, they call it like the hot rod of the airplane world. So most airplanes, if you are with me you uh, and you've flown a lot, you know you sit in your seat. They line up on the runway. They take off. You're kind of pushed in your seat. You climb up for a few minutes, and then they lower the engines down and then uh, you slowly climb up to 30,000 feet. At right. some point, they s- send the cart down with the beverages, and then, you know, like half an hour into your flight, the guy comes over the intercom, the, the guy, the pilot comes over the intercom and says, boom, we've reached our cruising altitude, yada, yada, yada. These airplanes don't do that. They have enough power in their engines that they, cru- they cruise at climb all the way to your 32,000 feet. Uh, they are super fast they are super powerful and um they're just way overbuilt <laughs> i mean just like a ridiculous amount of overbuilding on an airplane um you don't get that leveling off feeling until you've hit your actual uh cruising altitude they're very very comfortable jets and they tend to be quite long uh, long as far as like even when you walk inside like if you're in one of the back rows i mean you have to walk a long way to get yeah. to the very back i really like these airplanes they're super robust i brought it up because last week i talked about a 767 from boeing that we flew down to buenos aires with yes. jerry and don mm-hmm. 11 hour flight 11 hour flight this one and the reason I brought that up, rather, was because I was thinking about we're going to Ecuador for my um, birthday Happy here birthday. in May. So it made me think of like flights I've taken to South America, and that's kind of how I got that idea. This is the plane we're taking to South America. Oh, great. We are actually flying on a 757-200 uh, down to Ecuador. And again, hmm. I've flown this plane a lot, and I'm excited. I'm like, it's, it doesn't have the lay flat seats or anything like that, but we don't need it. It's only a five and a half hour flight or something like that. So it's it's a long flight, but it's still not crazy long. Right. It's not overnight sleep long. No, no. And what's crazy is uh, we're flying in Ecuador. It's still in Eastern time zone. I'm not even changing time zones. That's awesome. Yeah. So uh, you can't use that jet lag excuse when you get home. Exactly. I don't want to hear it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll see. So uh, <laughs> so I really like this fl- this airplane. It's uh, it's a powerful monster. It, it takes off like a rocket. There's not many of them left. Uh, you, American Airlines has completely quit using them. United sells a few left, and Delta is by far the largest uh, user of them. These are actually the planes when they get really old. Like so, Delta's got some of these that are over thirty years old. They're in their charter fleet. When Delta flies around like basketball teams uh-huh. and football teams, yeah. those are the airplanes they're flying around in. Mm. It's a cool little airplane. Um, it's a robust airplane that can do a lot of stuff. It can fly to Europe if they had to. Um, they don't usually do that, but they have flown them to like Iceland before, okay, or Greenland, yeah. uh, both. So uh, for like middle Atlantic flights, they'll do or Bermuda, they'll use them. Um, but it's it's a really cool airplane. It's uh, if you get the chance over the next couple of years, 
um, to fly one, go for it. Uh, I think you'll like it. It's, um, but they are their their days are numbered, unfortunately. Yeah, that's the Boeing seven five seven dash two hundred. Again, Delta Airlines, United Airlines are pretty much your only options left to fly them. Anything? I was going to say thanks for sharing that with us, Patrick. Yeah. I yeah, was going to test them. I was going to see what kind of engines are are on those. Planes. Oh, he knows. Those are Pratt and Whitney's. Ah, nice. Yep. He knows. Yep. Yep. Uh, solid engine. Now, you, I think United has Rolls Royce, but Delta mostly is uh, Pratt and Whitney. Whitney. Yep. That I think is all we have. Can you believe it went by that quick? It did. Crazy, right? I think the only thing we have to do is remind everybody, July 21st to the 22nd of this year, we're going to be somewhere. What was the name of that place we're going to be at, Vince? The Allen County War, War, War Memorial Coliseum. Let me say it again. The Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. And that's going to be in Fort Wayne, Indiana, correct? Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. On July 21st, 22nd. You, I think you already said that. I part, did, I but so. let's get, yeah. I believe it was July 21st and 22nd. And 22nd, both days. Yes, and yes. that's going to be Expedite Expo and the uh, Crossroads of America Trucking Show. It's kind of a hybrid show they're doing this year that's uh, going to be uh, kind of cool to do. Uh, so it'll be truckload stuff, it'll be Expedite stuff. Um, we are going to be in booth 413, 413. Uh, and we are this year, again, as we did last year, sponsoring the world-famous Casino Night. Casino Night, for those of you that don't know, A, you should be listening to our podcast. But anyways, if you don't know, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, that is going to be a night where we actually, they have a huge ballroom. They they move all the tables and chairs out of the way, and they install... Um, the more casino, tables and chairs. More tables and chairs, but these are the casino tables. So mm, these are the fun ones. Uh, poker tables, blackjack tables, five card Monty tables, craps, uh, craps tables. Uh, I was gonna say baguette, but that's not right. Roulette. 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 That's the one. Baguette would be a French roll. Baguette would be a French roll, but so, baccarat would be a French game. Oh, that would be fun. Yeah. I don't think it. I don't, don't expect don't baccarat. So. No. No. Uh, no. No slot machine. So Jerry's not happy. It is a lot of fun. Uh, you, uh, Matt and Jamie, you've been there before. What did you think of the uh, casino night? Great time. It's a great time. I think so too. Right. Yeah. It is. Uh, it's a cash bar. So bring some money. Have a couple drinks. Throw down with us. They're going to give you a thousand dollars. If I money. had a thousand dollars, they're going to give you a thousand dollars of Monopoly money to play with. If you don't gamble and you're like, ah, it's not really for me, go to the roulette table, put a thousand dollars on black. Let's see what happens. Live a little, get a little crazy, right? Everybody's going to get a, a wristband when they get in, and the wristbands have got some numbers. They're going to give them door prizes all night long. It is a lot of fun. I always have uh, a blast. If you want to find me, I'll be at the craps table uh, showing everybody my lack of skill. And uh, I just encourage everybody to show up. Uh, the parking, I think, is... $16 for trucks six, $8 for cars. And that's $16 per day, right? It is $16 per day, but it does say here on the website, I was just reading this, on the website itself... $8 for cars, van, pickup trucks, and motorcycles, RV, straight, and semi-trucks are $16 per day. If you leave the parking area and come back, you will have to pay again. Um, but if you park on Friday and pay your $16 or your $8 and you don't take the truck out until you're, we're done on Saturday, you're only paying the once. Yeah. I, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a, it's a steal. But I anyways, so um, but there's going to be a lot of trucks out there. We mm -hmm. always uh, huddle up the Highfield trucks. I know a few of the carriers, if you're listening, you're like, I'm not with Highfield. Uh, come anyways, because a lot of these uh, carriers and fleets, they'll do the same thing. Yeah. And um, it's fun to throw down. I mean, you know, there's nothing like walking out of the uh, walking out of the building and you're walking through the parking lot and there's like, you know, uh, a, a company that's like grilling steaks for their people or or doing whatever. We, are, um, we sponsor a casino night, as we said. On Saturday night, we try to, doesn't always work out, but we try to, weather permitting, have a parking lot party. And that uh, that's a lot of fun. It I, is I a lot of fun. I enjoy those. We usually cater in, very high-end catering uh, for that event, I, I believe. Last, last year was pizza. Yes, last year was. And the year before, I think we had Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. The Taco Bell, yeah. yeah. I so mean, it's high-end catering. Who doesn't like Taco Bell catering? We're not Our, our parking lot party is not exclusive Highfield family. It's not. Our parking lot party has been in the past. Yeah, it's not Highfield exclusive. You know, if, you are, if we're out there having fun, stop by, talk to us. We're not going to try and 
force you to come join us. We just want to have fun and enjoy our, our time. So come, come hang out. No, a lot of great conversation. Yeah. A, lot yeah, of exactly. great conversation. a lot of great conversation. Oh, and, and, and almost every year there's other fleet owners out there hanging out with mm-hmm. us too. There like are. it's there a are. listen, expediting's a a small uh niche market in the industry. We all know each other. Yes. Uh it's impossible to keep secrets out here. It truly is. Uh but it is a very fun uh family geared environment and um we just have a blast yeah i encourage people to come out and join us if you are in the area we're gonna have a bunch of mentors out there jamie and matt you'll be out there as mentors we're gonna have uh, several other mentors out there to talk to you both on the panther side and the fedex side we're gonna have uh all of our staff is gonna be there so it's always funny too you you show up and you got like Jimmy sitting over in a corner doing maintenance stuff. <laughs> this time now I've Don with them doing yep. maintenance stuff as well. Yep. So <laughs> it'll uh it'll be a lot of fun. Lots uh, of fun. Um, I encourage everybody to come out. Uh, Jer Bear, do you have anything before we go? Yes. Uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Go ahead and ring that bell as well so that way you get notified of new videos whenever they drop. Um, share the video if you like it. Leave a review if you can. Uh, leave a comment on YouTube or leave a review on your favorite uh, podcasting app that you like to use. And uh, also look us up on Instagram, Facebook, The Outer Belt Podcast, uh, or over on Instagram, The Underscore Outer Belt Podcast. Uh, you can also find highfieldtrucking.com uh, for more information for what we do over here at Highfield and all the things that goes along. Or if you would like to join the Highfield family, uh, visit highfieldtrucking.com. That's my spiel. Cool. And on highfieldtrucking.com, too, we have a chat feature. We do have a chat feature. You can get on there. Uh, our lovely uh, Melissa, uh, Vince's better half. Excuse uh, me. We call her buttermilk. Buttermilk. We do call her buttermilk. <laughs> uh, she has joined us over on the marketing slash contractor sourcing side, and she is now on there helping me with the chat and doing a wonderful job. Uh, we do have Delena uh, as well in contractor sourcing. So uh, lots of people that you can talk to and uh, find out a lot of great information about Highfield. Yes, and uh, it, 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 very good information. You've been building a frequently asked questions side of it as well, yep. and um, that that website's really coming to it's really coming together. It came together originally, but it's just going to be. You know, I always look at these websites and I'm like, how they get all that information on there? What made them think of all that? Yeah. And boy, we're we're finding out. There it's just go. one piece there at a time. Go. Um, it's, it's like you said earlier, we started the conversation, we're always striving for greatness. Always. And the website is right there along with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, uh, Matt and Jamie, any final thoughts? No pressure, but here's a little pressure. little pressure. I definitely want to say, Jerry, what a great editing job you've been doing. Now understanding what you have to go through with these two. <laughs> very, very good job, Jerry. Wow. I have lots and lots of... Uh... Blackmail footage, as they like to call it. Yes. <laughs> We're not talking about that. We are. Yeah, that's being cut out of the podcast. That's yeah, being cut out. <laughs> yeah. And he can sleep during the video rendering. Yes. <laughs> oh, no. He got the uh, ultra hyper uplink 9000, so it, it yeah. renders in like 12 Rinders seconds. Fast. No, no, no. <laughs> this is an hour-long podcast, so it, it does take my MacBook a, a good 45 minutes to an hour to render. So, and then the upload is ridiculous because my internet sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the sad thing is you have the best laptop and the best uh, internet, so. That yeah, is that's the true. Thing, yeah. that's you know, the best I can get. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Eventually, you'll have the uh, more best. Yep. yep. <laughs> Eventually. Uh, I just want to say thank you so much to Matt and Jamie for joining us on the podcast. Yeah, thank you. didn't you. have to, and we really appreciate it. It was so much fun talking to y'all. Um this is what we do uh, when we record. And as you see, it's, I enjoy it. I really do. It's, it's fun. I was thinking about that earlier when when y'all two were talking to Vince. Uh, I kind of got lost in my head for a second and I was like, wow, this is a lot of fun. I, I enjoy, I, I'm so thankful for the opportunity to do this. I'm so thankful for the uh, audience that listens to us and watches us and uh, supports our, our, our endeavor here. It's, um, it really means a lot. At the end of the day, Vince and I were like, hey, let's put together this podcast and let's see what happens. And um, we want to um, thank all of y'all for listening. Thank you for participating. Jerry Bear, I want to echo what Matt says. You do a great job. I and appreciate that. Um, we look forward to doing this 
Again, we will see you next week. Oh, 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 I almost forgot. May 13th, we're doing another live. So May 13th, 6 p.m., please join us. Uh, set it on your calendar. Do a, a reminder an hour before and a day before, as I always do. And come join us May 13th. We're going to be live. 6 p.m. Eastern. 6 p.m. Eastern. 3 p.m. Pacific. 3 p.m. Pacific. And sometime in between if you're in the, in the, if you're in the between. Yeah. Or um, earlier than that if you're in Hawaii. Yeah, sure. And if you're in China. Ooh, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we thank you so much for your uh, support. It has been a blast. If you have anything to comment or, or any ideas that you want to hear about us talk about on the show, you want to hear us uh, rattle off on anything, certainly send that information to us. As Jerry said, the Outer Belt Podcast, leave a comment. Uh, we absolutely want to hear what you want us to talk about. This is your show. I keep reiterating it. This is your show. We want to uh, bring you what you want to hear. In the meantime, everybody, please stay safe and make good decisions. Jamie, thank you for joining us on the podcast today. We really appreciate it. Um, don't leave money on the table. And keep those wheels a-turning. Thanks, Matt. <laughs>